I'm here once again to talk about Xbox One backwards compatibility. I know we've been talking about this an awful lot lately, but we have yet another update. This time we have an official response from Microsoft to the Ars Technica report. Of course, I've already did covered the unofficial response from Mike Nichols on Twitter. Of course, Phil Spencer chimed in as well, but we have some actual counters to the data that Ars Technica collected. So, my name is Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, we're here to discuss those very same responses to what Ars Technica had to say. Now, before I continue, just want to give a bit of a sort of backstory. Perhaps you missed all of this. Um, all of this started when I commented on the comments from Jim Ryan surrounding the lack of backwards compatibility on the PS4. And I completely disagreed with his comments in pretty much every way. And then obviously we had a report pretty much the next day from Ars Technica showing some worryingly low usages for backwards compatibility on the Xbox One. And this did kind of make me rethink my position a little bit. Perhaps I was a little too hasty is what it comes down to, but I still think there's something to be taken away here. But, you know, Ars Technica have addressed all of the concerns raised by Microsoft and we'll get to that in a minute. So let's just crack on with what Microsoft had to say. Now they issued a statement first of all to BG247 and they refuted the data in the report after they completed its own analysis of the Ars Technica data using quote identical parameters and they said we've carefully reviewed Ars Technica's article and have completed our own analysis of the actual data using identical parameters. Based on our findings, Ars Technica's analysis and conclusions are grossly inaccurate and misleading due to an incomplete set of data and drawing conclusions about actual usage from data that approximates usage. As an example, we specifically know, based on a complete view of Xbox Live usage data, players are highly engaged with backwards compatible game titles, it's why we continue to support this World Love feature and the games that use it. We appreciate the work and effort put forward by Ars Technica to share more information about the Xbox community and we continue looking for ways to do so that protects the interests of our gamers and our partners. Now, I did just say that Ars Technica have updated their report. Yes, they actually have. They absolutely have rather. Because Microsoft did contact them as well and basically told them what the problem was. And as they just referenced in the statement to VG there, the issue is that a lot of Ars basis for the, the comments that they made and the statistics that they generated is that as Microsoft said, the data they were using is meant as an approximation. It's not meant to be an exact, to the point, timing of how much you've used. They use the Xbox API, and basically this is essentially meant as a tool for you to see how much you've played versus your friend or whatever. You know, you can you can see, oh, I've played five hours of this. My friend has played ten hours. I've got to catch up to him. That sort of thing. It's not meant to be exact, it's purely an approximation of the time spent in the game. So obviously that did lead ours, and they do show this in the article which will be linked in the description below, I do suggest you read it, that, that this led them to vastly underestimate total usage times for the apps and games in their usage sample. The My Games and Apps section is used by 71% 71, 71 of Xbox One players during their sample, not the approximately 6.3% shown by our data. So that's the kind of level of inaccuracy that you're talking about here. Now, as I said, I do definitely recommend that you take a look at the article from Ars Technica. It addresses what they are correcting based upon Microsoft's input and what they aren't correcting. Whether or not you think their article has any basis at all, I think is down to you. I still think there's something to be gleaned here, but obviously we should take what they presented with a fairly large pinch of salt and the knowledge that obviously they were working with an incomplete tool basically they didn't really have the right tool for the job so basically the TLDR of all of this is that the picture for Xbox One backwards compatibility is not as bleak as we thought not nearly as bleak so this this pretty much means that I'm, I'm back to my initial position obviously there are still concerns and obviously Sony isn't going to change its mind based upon me making a video about it on the internet but it does mean that there's a basis from Microsoft saying, hey, look, a lot of users support this, a lot of users use it. And obviously there is a reason why they keep spending money and resources on this. They wouldn't cost themselves money just for fun. So, yeah, this basically swings me back, as I already said. And while I would love to see some more official figures from Microsoft, I doubt we'll ever get them. This is, still is, rather, a good indication that 
the feature is better used than perhaps we initially thought, which is good. I'm glad to hear it because, you know, there's a lot of great games that unfortunately can't be played either because your 360 doesn't work anymore, or you threw it away, or you gave it away, or you maybe even chose Sony last generation and now you switched over, or perhaps it's your very first console. There's numerous reasons why you could go back and play these games but you have no other way to play them. And as I keep saying in all of these videos, we need to do more as an industry to preserve these old titles. So I'm glad to see it getting the love it deserves. Again, I really would love to see a full breakdown report based upon uh, accurate uh, tools and data, but short of that, we at least have a bit of a picture. And of course, I still think there is a little bit of validity and some stuff to be gleaned and some interesting perspectives to be gained from Ars Technica, whether or not you want to believe it or not, I'll leave that down to you. I still think there are some piece of information of value from there, even if the initially damning number of under 2% usage is now, of course, very much in question. So, with all that said, do find the link to their report, and their, oh, sorry, their updated report, should I say, in the description below this video. Thank you very much for watching. Do, of course, remember to stick around, as, of course, I will be covering the Microsoft Conference, which is later on tonight. I'll see you next time.